Hey, what's up, mediums? Welcome to another episode of Thursday Night Live here on Keystroke Medium. It's season two, episode 50. I am Josh, Master and Commander Hayes, <laughs> here with my co-host, Scott Moon. I don't have a funny nickname for him. And tonight, Kelly Lytle, uh, author of Two Dad from Kelly and one of the minds behind the Find A Way Voices service joins the show. Uh, Find A Way Voices is a brand new avenue for the audiobook market. Uh, and tonight, Kelly joins us to talk about how they're revolutionizing uh audiobooks kelly welcome to the show hey thank you very much i am uh, i'm glad to join thank you guys for having me on uh well thanks for coming on last minute that was our fault we're terrible hosts and, no you guys uh, are the best you guys are the best <laughs> that's what they all say and of course they're all right well the other method we like to use is i like to stand out in in the doorway and just wave people in from the street but we've got know. candy come and hang out <laughs> But then the police come and they tell me I can't do that anymore. Yeah, and then it just gets you know gets weird and awkward real fast, and that's yeah, not good. I think Always people are going to be very excited about about this one. I know I am. Um, if anybody that's watched the show for any length of time knows that Josh and I are huge audiobook fans. Um, I've done, I have done ACX, uh, a couple. I've done the uh, awesome. the royalty share, and I've done I've done the paid services, and so I have a little bit of experience. Some of our guests go through places like Podium, so I think that uh, this is going to be a really cool show. So I hope everybody yeah. watches the whole thing and learns a it, bunch from it. Let, let, let me ask you guys a question. If you're audiobook junkies, how, how far back do you go? Do you go back to the days of like, like actual cassette tapes? Oh, yeah. Because uh, like my family and I always joke, like we were literally that family caravanning from Ohio down to Florida and listening to audiobooks on actual tapes, and we still – uh, we, you know, we make fun of ourselves to this day. My mom was a school teacher and she'd go to the library and get like eight books for the drive. And, and, you know, that's yep. where it all started for me. <laughs> yeah. And you, you get those audio and you get, and you basically go to any audio book you can find. Cause you don't right. have a lot of exactly. You're like, well, I guess we're reading about, you know, the building of the Panama Canal. You know, right. That's what the library had and that's what you got to listen exactly. to. You know? exactly. I, yeah. uh, I did it on uh, audio. I, I listened to that one. <laughs> yeah. I did it on uh, cassette tape and, and uh, compact disc though was the was the oh, yeah. preferred method and I remember I, I my my audiobook journey started with Harry Potter book three or was it book four I can't remember which but I was uh, I was driving from Wyoming to Kansas and I said I need something to listen to so I go to the library and I find Harry Potter book four I hadn't read the other ones but I'd seen the movie and I was like whatever so I, I listened to it that was my first foray well then I got uh, I think the next one after that was Cell by Stephen King. And you want to talk about horror, I got halfway through, and as I'm swapping out discs, I drop the case, and all the CDs go everywhere. I completely forgot which disc I had been on. So then I had to go through like three or four discs trying to figure out, was I on two or three? Messed me up. Messed me up for life. It did. It did. Uh, one of our guests, uh, C. Stephen Manley, Chuck, says he listens to cassettes on road trips between Cali and Bama. So... That'd be a good one too, but he still All, has an eight track. Yeah, he's got eight track. We uh, we listened to um, uh, the Dark Tower was one of the yes. first ones, and and we listened to that, and we and then we got into some other ones. But then the next book came out, but it was not available on audio cassette, and um, and so we read it. We so we because we drove a lot, you know, being in, being where we live here in Kansas, you got to drive like a lot to get anywhere, and so we would take turns reading the book. We were so addicted to audiobooks that on the trips, and we would then read the books. My, like my mom would drive, and she would read, and I'd drive, and she'd read, and back and forth, and so on. So, it's a great way to pass the time. And we did the same thing. We did the same thing. Awesome. Well, well uh, on Thursday nights, we like to talk about uh, what we've been uh, doing this week. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everybody that's in the live chat. Uh, all the regulars are here, and causing a ruckus as usual. Uh, thanks, guys, for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, if you're listening on the audio feed or watching on YouTube later, shame on you for not coming to the live show. So come, come hang out. Yeah, here uh, we like to shame people a lot. It's one of our yes. key things we do. We find it's very positive. <laughs> Ritual <laughs> shaming. We can reach out. Not as not as bad as Game of Thrones shaming, but still like no, I mean, okay. Game of Thrones shaming and then Keystroke Medium shaming is like right You're pretty close. Below. you know, we want to be learn this. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so we wanted to be associated with with the Game of Thrones in some way, and that's just the only thing we could think of at the time. So. <laughs> right, best we could do. Trying. So Scott, Scott, what have you been up to this week, buddy? 
Um, you know, I, I completely forgot to, to prepare myself for this. Let's see. What did I do? Um, <clears throat> last week, uh, I have one of, one of the many moon children turned 18. So we had a birthday party. That was fun. And then, um, I, I launched, I finished and launched a heavy weapons, which is the third serial story in my, in my Viking science fiction. So I'm still striving to get that one out to readers as it's kind of a, a, a strange little niche. But it's cool because I like things that are done and it's it's a finished story and it's in three. Put that out. Got a lot of people that putting some reviews down. Um, I know there was something that would people would be more interested than that, but I just cannot <laughs> think of what it, what it would be. Um, that's pretty much it. Just doing a lot of writing, working, doing stuff with the family. Oh, and and I realized yesterday that our dog Mavis is fat. <laughs> so somebody's been feeding that dog people food. We had this brand new puppy. Nice. <laughs> and they took it to the groomer and they cut its really, really long hair. I'm like, oh my God. That dog's like <laughs> twice its normal size. <laughs> anyway, but she's cute and we love her and all that. So um that's about well, all Kelly, what it uh, I, I don't know if you've ever caught the show before, but we like to put our guests on the spot and have them uh, tell us what they've been doing this week. What have you been up to? Man, we have been so busy. Uh, you know, I think everyone knows the big announcement with Find Away Voices and Draft to Digital. Um, and what we're uh, very excited about bringing into the uh, audiobook space for authors and publishers. And the flood of interest, the flood of excitement has been uh, darn near overwhelming in terms of response. And so I've been writing a lot of emails and answering a lot of questions about just what we're up to. So I don't have anything as, as exciting as saying uh, I'm right there on a, a, a trilogy or getting it out the door, but uh, I can say I've been fielding a lot of questions about uh, the good things we have going with voices and with audiobooks. Um, and what we're trying to do to grow that market and open it even more for, for authors and pubs. So, man, it's, uh, there's, it's created a huge buzz within our, our whole company, and uh, we're pretty excited for it. So I've been kind of busy around the clock on that. I should have put that down as by something that I, you know, I'm excited about is this show because, like I said, I really am. <laughs> and we should thank uh, Kevin Tumlinson from draft to digital for giving us the intro because he kind of right. stepped in. And Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, yeah. Kevin. Give us a softball pitch, and we can like hopefully <laughs> let's get like, a really good foul ball, like one that looks like it's going to go out of the park, but you know, at least. A couple other people in the a couple people in the chat mentioned that I have a really cool background. I don't know if anybody else noticed that, but it's really not that cool. Uh, I switched my desk around, and that wall is not finished. So I'm going to give you guys a special preview. Well, it's not actually a preview because I'm going to show you. We have sound you. effects. This one we could have like the, the the crowd clapping or something. So, so here is the this is the new studio. So now you're seeing this is me on my iPhone. This is like on the so, Jay Leno show when they go backstage is, and they show the film crew this, and stuff. This is the new show. I don't know if you can't hear me because I'm not talking on the mic. This is the new studio, and it's just a bed sheet. That's all it is. It looks a, a lot bed like sheet a basement a bed sheet. Yeah, and so there's there's the wall that I used to have. There's my old wall, and there's the new wall, and uh, that's the new setup. I, I hung my monitors upside down. Uh, How would because, you do that? Well... I'll tell you why, Scott, because <laughs> <laughs> when I have my – hold on. I'm going to switch my ah, my camera. Uh, when I have my uh, standing desk standing, I cannot see the other monitors. They're behind it. Right. So I moved them so that when I stand it, I can still see them. It's simple. But anyway, that's all I did. I, I wrote some of my um, – short story for the uh, war uh, anthology and uh, uh, I'm reading Jack Campbell's or listening to on audiobook go figure Jack Campbell's um, van, uh, was it van fantasy one the uh, oh no 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 his newest one his uh, his new lost free is Vanguard yeah Vanguard I'm about I got three hours left on it so uh, pretty good book, really good narrator. The uh, the narrator Christian Rommel or Christian Rommel, uh, very good, highly recommended. I went back and started that. I'm right now. I'm trying to finish up our Altered Carbon still. 
Oh, yeah. Good, good book. Uh, speaking of audiobooks, hey. Hey, whoa, look at that. Nice. Hey, anyone, anyone listen to audiobooks? Man, that was <laughs> uh, Kelly, uh, this Find Away Voices thing uh, is, is kind of a, you've pinned it as kind of an alternative to ACX. Um, but before we get into that, would you kind of uh, just give our uh, audience just a little bit about yourself, uh, you as a writer, and then you as uh, uh, behind uh, Find Away? Yeah. Absolutely. So um, I, let's see, I self-published uh, my first book in the fall of 2014. Uh, it's called Two Dad from Kelly. It's a memoir uh, about my relationship with my late father, passed away a few years ago. So it's a collection of short stories about lessons I learned from him, questions left unasked or unanswered. He was 56 when he passed away of a sudden and massive heart attack. Um, and sort of the interesting, I guess, marketing twist you could say on that is that he was a, uh, he played in the NFL for seven years for the Denver Broncos, and he was an All-American at the University of Michigan and is, uh, was posthumously inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame uh, two years ago now. Um, and he also suffered uh, greatly from uh, post-concussion syndrome and chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, um, which is becoming more and more prominent uh, with ex-athletes, especially ex-football players. Um, and so the book is really, it's, it's both a, a thanks from me to him um, about uh, our relationship and everything he meant to me, uh, but it's also a question of, you know, you know me asking, hey, Dad, um, you were able to live that dream of playing professional football that you set for yourself when you were eight years old. Uh, but that dream ultimately cost you your life in your mid-50s. And it's me asking, was it worth it? And coming to grips and reconciling with a oh, lot wow. of that. And so it was a, uh, you know, as you can imagine, a heartfelt journey, um, a very mm. personal, very inward, reflective journey, um, and, and a very life-changing set of moments for me. Um, and just something I'm, you know, so grateful that I was able to do. Um, and as it relates specifically even to what we're talking about today, I was fortunate enough to um, find a way um, who I worked for helped coordinate uh, me actually recording the audio book of that. And, you know, if I could do it over again, I don't know if I would narrate again because it was, uh, it was uh, a pretty entertaining set of three days, three or four days when I did it. Um, but it gave me great uh, experience into what we're now doing. Um, but, uh, you know, two dads from Kelly, just an amazing journey to write. Um, and then specifically for Find A Way, um, for those who don't know, uh, Find A Way Voices is a part of a larger company, Find A Way. Find A Way has been a pioneer in the audiobook and really digital content space for over a decade. Uh, we invented and created a device called the Play Away, which is a preloaded single title audiobook player, immensely popular in public library and also in uh, relationships we have with the US military. Uh, we also have a platform, digital platform called Audio Engine, which is the largest, world's largest business to business audiobook platform where we're partnering with companies who sell um, uh, audiobooks we license from publishers to their customers and uh, uh, through their own brand experiences. Um, and so I've been, you know, played a few different roles at Find A Way um, helping to grow the audio engine business and a few other avenues. Um, and then last year, as we sort of looked at, you know, let's launch this creation and distribution service uh, to benefit independent authors and benefit publishers, um, I was able to take a lead role in that. And now we're, you know, we're, we're just at the starting line of what we, you know, have planned and what we're doing. And that draft to digital announcement is, you know, really the tip of the iceberg of it. So, um, you know, it's been a great several years at Find A Way, and we've done some amazing things in audiobooks, and we have so much more planned uh, and kind of our goal to open up the market and, and benefit, you know, consumers, benefit authors, benefit listeners, benefit narrators, and everyone across the board. So there, there's a bunch of really cool things in there now. Um, so, like, and, what, and we can hit on several of them. Um, one of the ones you said you have a partnership with, like, the U.S. military. So I'm assuming that's for, like, people that are deployed or just otherwise in the military have access to get some of those some of those types of things. Uh, Josh Josh is a veteran and uh, wow. served, served and stuff. So he probably knows what it's like to be someplace where you need some some entertainment because I think he was at Minoc one time. Uh, Effie Warren, but, yeah, pretty much deployed to the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> So that's really cool. So it's interesting yeah. to that and then the business stuff. 
So what's different about what you guys are doing now as far as obviously we're, we're you're reaching out to maybe um, a broader range of audio publishers? Exactly. So, you know, with Find Away Voices specifically, our goal is to create a single service that helps authors, publishers create high quality audiobooks and then sell those audiobooks really everywhere they can. By giving authors more control, control over price, control over where they sell, how they sell, um, never ask for exclusivity, um, a truly open platform where you as the rights owner always do own the rights and have full control. Um, and you know, we hope to um, open the distribution networks available through retail library K through 12 um, and do so in a way that is very different than is available today just through that openness of platform um, in service. And then you have the, the find a way service commitment behind all that to make sure um, you know, we'll, we'll provide you with that high quality narration. We'll make sure your book reaches everywhere you, know, you want it to go. Um, and you know, give you that great experience along the way. Okay, I'm I'm curious about. Um, I just want to kind of go through, um, what you're going to provide, what what you're doing for authors as 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 a as a platform, and and then kind of get into what you're doing to get it into the other services. Oh, so like. Yeah. You're you're partnering with uh, D2D and we love Draft Digital. Uh, love Absolutely. Kevin and and uh, what he's doing over there. Great things. Uh, kind of an ebook aggregate service where you go to D2D, you put your book in there, and then it goes whoosh, magically. It appears in all these other things. So is that kind of what happens here, or can you work us through kind of what the process? If I as an author wants to yeah. wants to do an audio book, what what's the first step that I do well, here? Yeah, what do we need to bring to? The, do we need to have like the audio files, or do we a couple of couple of different ways so i'll speak sort of generally and then i can even go into a little bit more on the draft to digital relationship too okay. yeah. um but there's there's several you know there's several approaches one um for anyone who just comes to find a way voices the first step is for us to learn more about your book and so we ask a few questions you provide us with a manuscript or a partial manuscript or something you may want an audition of um, we take that information. We have a team uh, that provides casting recommendations. So you're able to view and listen to samples from narrators um, and start the process that way. So it all starts with us learning a little bit more about your book. Now, if you already have an audio book, well, then you're able to move very quickly into our system, provide your metadata, provide all of your book details, um, and begin uploading audio files um, immediately. And once you've done that, you'll work through uh, a, a very easy to use process that lets you choose where you want to sell, which partners you want to reach. Um, and just, you know, the way you alluded to earlier about draft to digital where uh, you have the ebook and it's ready to go and you press publish and it goes out to, you know, all of the different retailers and, and venues much the same way in our platform. So you're able to select from over 20 different partners um, and you, you have full control over where you will be selling and so what, if you publish to all of them, you know, you press publish and we make sure your book gets, you know, everywhere you've selected it to go, um, which is incredibly valuable because we consolidate that. Um, specifically to draft to digital, um, what we're doing is something very unique where inside of the draft to digital publishing workflow, um, you have options all throughout where if you're ready or interested in creating an audiobook, you'll have the ability to, um, uh, you know, click a button that says create audiobook and you'll move seamlessly between the two services such that your information ports um, and we make it very easy to connect between the two services um, such that you don't have to waste time uh, adding addition, adding information more than once, um, uploading different, you know, files, cover art, manuscript, etc. cetera. Uh, you bring that information right on over. We get a sense of the title from you. We start casting recommendation, uh, narrator casting recommendations, find that fit for you and start making the audio book and you have approvals all throughout that process. When you, when you're talking about the, the reading sample just now, uh, C. Stephen Manley asks how much of a reading sample do they read before, or do you read before making a narrator recommendation? 
Yeah, so what we typically do is we will cast uh, usually five to 10 narrators and we do so at a range of price points. Um, and you're able to read bios and hear general samples from the narrator. And if there's one narrator or two or three narrators that you like, uh, you can request an audition. And at that point, um, we usually ask for one to two, three to five minute samples of your work um, as an audition from the narrator. They supply that. So now you can hear your work with the voice that you're interested in. And then once you're comfortable there, we actually enter into the full engagement. And then there's additional approvals there where, you know, before we commence the full project, um, the narrator that you've selected will read a much longer sample. So you get used to and approve the tone and the tempo and the pace and all of the sort of stylistic elements that are so important. Uh, to get right along the way. So we have a couple of checks um, throughout the process that you know, help ensure that you as the author get uh, the right voice for your work. Um, how many narrators do you have? Uh, I mean, do you have them on staff or are they just freelancers most of the time? How does that work? Yep, it's, it's freelancers. Um, and so we've, we've worked to, to build a community of narrators that's um, in the many um, hundreds at the moment. Um, but we also, you know, we want to be very mindful um, and, you know, every narrator that works with us, they go through an approval process, they send us samples, they send us information. And so we're really working to cultivate that network such that you as the author know, um, hey, any recommendation that I've received from Find Away Voices, you know, that narrator can deliver to me a really high quality audio book and do so in, in a very you know, efficient turnaround time. Um, and so we want that as sort of the background. Um, and so we've taken good care to, I think, smartly manage the number of narrators, balance it against the number of projects we have. Um, and we wanna keep growing both sides of that equation as equally as we can, because we want people active on the platform and narrating on a consistent basis. And that keeps everyone happy and engaged along the way. Um, so you, you, the, you're saying that the, the narrators go through an approval process and then they're, they're, they're eligible to, to narrate books for your, for your company. If I have a book that's done and then I have a narrator that wants to do it, that's not affiliated with find a way. Is it, is it a hassle to bring them in and ha say, I want them to narrate my book through your service or N n not at all. Um, I mean, you, you can text me and we'll get it. We'll get the process started. <laughs> <laughs> um, Josh no, would probably Snapchat you because <laughs> okay, we, uh, he's, he's really just yeah. that. <laughs> a direct message on Twitter. Um, <laughs> no, exactly. You know, so the everything about our platform, whether it's on creation and distribution or in the narration, it's an open platform. It's a non-exclusive platform. So if you have a narrator you've worked with in the past that you're comfortable with and you know can deliver on your book, especially if it's a series where that consistency of voice is so important, right. then absolutely put us, you know, put us in touch with the narrator, have them contact us. We'll respond immediately and we'll start working. And, and you even have the ability to um, request a preferred narrator um, as you're going through the, the casting process. So, you know, we've heard that, you know, time and time again, and ultimately we want you to be infinitely happy with the voice you have. And so if you already have that in place, we just want to continue that because um, that, that will help, the rela help foster the relationship and keep you coming back to create more titles um, with additional books. So absolutely. Um, see, see Stephen Manley or Chuck as we like. Ch Chuck the man, Chuck Manley. Chuck the man, Chuck Manley. Uh, his episode. Hi, hi Chuck. <laughs> Uh, he's, he's a huge audio book junkie, the same, same as we are. And his, his next question is what criteria do you use when matching a voice to a manuscript? If you, for instance, do you have, if you get a fantasy manuscript, do you have fantasy narrators in mind or advice? Do you have science fiction narrators or romance? How do you guys work uh, that out? Yep. All, all of the above. So we've categorized, um, a, uh, uh, our entire narrator, you know, narrator network, um, in terms of genre performance for genre, genres that may be off limits for a narrator. Um, and then we've categorized them by vocal style, vocal, you know, voice age, um, accents available and everything under the sun. And so we have, um, you know, metrics um, that let us 
quickly sort through the, the information we collect to populate the right recommendations. And then we again have a team that is reviewing those to make sure are we putting, you know, we've reviewed the manuscript or we've reviewed the text that has come in. We see what narrators uh, look like the best fit. And then are we truly putting the best recommendations forward as we review them um, based on what we know and have collected from the narrators about their style, the genres that they prefer, their recording history. And so we kind of bring that all together um, in order to create the recommendations. The next question I have is, is to do with um, uh, specifically getting a project off the ground and then um, getting paid basically but so ACX they just opened up in Canada as far as yeah. I understand but they they have not been in Canada um, and so a lot of uh, Canadian authors and publishers were not able to go through ACX or Amazon to get their audiobook out um, is there any restrictions on coming to find a way from different geographical locations no there's not in fact we've actually created several audiobooks for Canadian authors already um, a little bit by behind the scenes on our platform, but no restrictions. Um, our goal is to open the audiobook market, and that means opening it for international authors, serving uh, areas and regions where ACX is not, um, and ultimately helping authors create more books and then sell those books in more places um, than they might be able to today. So um, absolutely not. We're, we're ready to go. It seems like the, our, our neighbors in Canada have kind of got the shaft a lot. I remember. When, <laughs> it's true. Well, and and not just with audiobooks. The because uh, I remember when I first started getting on in the on the uh, self publishing thing, there were some restrictions on whether they could be in KDP or KDP KDP Select, and then they had restrictions with the audiobooks and stuff. So I, I like the fact that you're opening it up. So let me ask you. My next question was going to be, so who's responsible for like doing the uh, the like the narrator records it and they upload the files and they mix it down who does the quality control my last book with acx um my narrator i thought did a brilliant job and but when it was sent up it took forever to approve and it did okay. get approved and i'm very happy with it and thank you acx and all that um but it but i just don't know in, in your shop how is that handled or what's the process Yep. So, you know, there's a lot of similar steps and then some different steps. So um, as a narrator with Find Away Voices, um, you are delivering an audiobook that is finished and ready for sale. Um, and so you've, you know, you've quality checked it as well. Um, with that said, we also have uh, a QA process and a QC process for every title that comes through where we're reviewing not just for audio quality, but also checking the title for um, you know, any missteps or errors or anything like that. Um, ultimately, the author or the rights owner always has final approval. Um, but as that title moves through our publishing pipes and our publishing network internally, um, we are reviewing all of the files as well to make sure they're um, vendable and saleable for all of our downstream partners um, and meet the quality standards that we have for all of the titles um, along the way. And, um, you know, there's, there's no question it can sometimes, uh, you know, when you work with a multitude of downstream partners, it can take a little bit longer than you would like to get that title available for sale. Uh, but we do everything we can to make it available as soon as possible, um, and have a team ready to review, um, and move through that process quickly. Go ahead, Go ahead Scott. And I say I don't want to sound like I was complaining because I wasn't really in a hurry this time, but I could see where if somebody was had a deadline to make or they're trying to coordinate launches, uh, like if they wanted to, to coordinate with, you know, something else in their series, it could be difficult. Um, <clears throat> I, have, I have another question concerning uh, uh, Amazon only only because Audible is is typically all I listen to when it comes to audiobooks. Um, but with your, your distribution to there, um, how does that work pay, payment-wise when, when we, like on, on Audible? How do, you, how do you get it to Audible and sell it on Audible without going through ACX or, or Amazon? What's the process there? Yes. So we have a relationship uh, with Audible um, where we're able, to, you know, we're able to publish to them and reach Audible, Amazon, iBooks. 
um, those retailers. Um, and so, you know, it's as, you know, as simple as that really for us to be able to, to publish the titles um, through there the same way we do with all of our, you know, really all of our other partners, um, whether it's Nook Audiobooks or whether it's Overdrive or Audiobooks.com. Um, you know, we're a publisher for them, even though we're working on behalf of all of the authors to make that network available. So the author is always the actual publisher and their name is on, you know, the, the title detail screen. Um, but we, we have that relationship where we're able to, uh, to upload files and, and upload the, the audio books to them and, and get them available for sale. I was hoping for more of a story where you guys like have to load up the audiobooks like on a ship on a boat you go through the dock at night and there's like switch lights and then you infiltrate then you like scale up a wall and you sneak in and then you download them secretly. Well, you know, with with you know our business, we um, you know in the our, our audio engine platform, you know, today we license over 150,000 audiobooks from publishers all over the world. And, you know, we still receive books on CDs and we'll get, you know, you know, uh, FedEx boxes full of them. You know, we have actually have processes that, you know, go in um, and automate, you know, uh, technology to, to take out disc declarations. So we're removing change disc, you know, so this is the end of disc one, move to disc two. And we're right. doing that. So, you know, it's not as far fetched as you would think that that yeah. actually is, is sort of happening so we do have some experience there if we need to that, that makes me ha that makes me happy i, I like to <laughs> imagination is running wild as we speak we got right, several exactly. good questions in the chat box uh you want to get those josh you want me to look for them I go just for it dude uh, let's see um let's go back up to how do contracts work for the audiobooks jr hanley asks sure um contract? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure I'll hit all the points, but I'll do my best uh, kind of open question there. Um, you know, there's a production and distribution agreement with Findaway, um, and that covers whether you're creating and selling the audiobook or whether you're, you already have an audiobook made and you're looking just to distribute it. Again, it's fully non-exclusive. Um, you're able to go on to our publishing workflow, see the terms, um, agree to those terms. Again, there's nothing exclusive. Um, you can, you know, remove your title at any time. We don't do anything to handcuff you. Um, we're a very open platform about that. Um, and so, you know, I think it's, you know, it's really as simple as just logging in and, and doing that, those terms and, um, you know, being able to, to agree to them. So I'm not sure I quite answered it, but if there's specifics, I'm, you know, more than happy to. Yeah, let's nail down. I just, just heard handcuffs. Just That's all I really heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> handcuffs. Probably the wrong word there, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I would like to nail it down uh, a little bit more specific in, in the, mm -hmm. when we talk about the payouts. And um, since we've been comparing it to ACX, with ACX, you can do a one-time payment where you say you pay four or $5,000 to the to the narrator, and then you take all the profits as the author. Uh, or they also have a... Um, uh, royalty split, yeah. right? Um, so, uh, two questions: uh, A, who controls the prices, and B, um, can you do that either or royalty share or upfront payment? Yep. So, all projects currently with Find Away Voices are pay for production. Uh, so, the author is paying for the narration, um, and we do that very specifically. Uh, because that keeps more of the royalties earned on every sale. So they're not sharing, uh, you know, on ACX it's 50-50, um, but overall they're not sharing in royalties and they're able to own that uh, royalty stream in perpetuity. So we do that very intentionally. So there is that upfront, um, you know, <laughs> we, we like to say, and then we joke about it, it's not a narration cost, it's an investment in narration and it's an investment in your audiobook. Um, Absolutely. because that's what, what you're, what, what you're really doing is investing in your platform. Um, mm -hmm. and so there's no question. Um, so there's that, and, um, it is a one-time payment and it's due at the time, uh, of the audiobooks approval. Um, so once you've listened, once you've approved that full audiobook and it's ready to be published, um, that's when you, when you'll pay. So, um, you know, you actually get to experience the narration, get to experience your comfort with it and approve it. Um, and then you do, and again, we do the pay for production for those very specific reasons. 
and I and I think too, you can look at I I, I listened to a a guy who was um, very against the uh, royalty share through ACX because it it, uh, it it didn't really really equate to much for the narrator. They weren't they weren't getting enough for their time as the when you look at you know Depending say who they're sharing with. Well, right, right, right. Exactly. Well, exactly. When, you, when we had Luke Daniels on here, he was going to do a royalty share, but it was with somebody huge, you know. Yeah. Where he'll probably well, do for the more. the it's, the average the average indie author and the average narrator probably wouldn't benefit very much from a royalty share, but whereas you're paying for a complete upfront payment, I think that would and and then the narrator has agreed to that upfront payment and all that stuff, so. It wouldn't yep. be too bad for people that are at the same kind of level of breaking in, like a author that's breaking in, a narrative that's breaking in. Maybe it can both have, but but I, I tend to agree that just the straight payment is simpler and cleaner in the in the long term. You know, I've done both, and um, <clears throat> I can't really say I have an opinion about too much. Yeah, but. and and one of the ways that voices differentiates itself from other services. To oh. Do, um, is that when we actually do so at a range hour rate, so all audiobooks are quoted, um, you know, typically quoted on a per finished hour basis. Right. And so we'll actually cast, if we cast, you'll see a whole range of, of, of prices. Um, and again, that just creates an additional element of choice, uh, but not an overwhelming amount. So, um, and again, you know that uh, from our platform, all of the narrators are high quality. Um, and we're able to present them again at that price, you know, at that range of prices, which gives you as the author an opportunity to, you know, make the choice that's right for, you know, your budget, um, for your expected ROI and your anticipated sales and all of that. Um, and we'll work with you to try to, you know, make that happen. I really like this um, find your sweet spot uh, little widget. And I've been playing with it the whole time. We've been, You've been uh -oh. playing with your sweet spot widget? That's scary. Yeah, been, yeah that's scary. Playing, Oh, nicely done, Scott. I've been playing with my sweet spot widget during the Heatstroke Media. On the Thursday Find Away show. Voices Here's website. Yes. Special new little office, Jen. Yeah. So uh, for those of you that aren't on the Find Away Voices uh, page, you can go to the Authors and Publishers section, and down at the bottom, it allows you to – there's three sliders, one for the number of words, one for the narrate, the narrator rate per hour, and one for the list price of your book. Uh, so – for instance, if you have a, an 80,000 word manuscript and say you want your you want to pay your narrator, let's just say $150 for chickens per finished hour. So you're looking at nine, nine hours. <laughs> nine hours. You found the sweet spot, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just a little bit of right now. So so you you have nine finished hours in an eighty thousand word manuscript and you want to pay your narrator one hundred and fifty dollars per finished hour. So a little over what twelve hundred dollars or something for a finished book. Uh, you if you wanted to sell that book at thirty dollars per book, you would have to sell two hundred and one books to break even. But if you dropped that price per book to say fifteen, you'd have to sell four hundred and one book so it's it's a really neat uh yeah jr i'll link it it's a really neat uh little deal that you can say okay uh, i i know that this narrator and and uh, let me ask you this do your narrators have a a t like do you have a narrator that only does 200 dollars an hour or a narrator that only does 300 dollars an hour and can you see that when you choose your narrator you, you'll see um, you'll see narrator rates when we cast them. So narrate with a uh, with voices. Narrators always set their rates, um, so they inform us of a per finished hour rate, which they can change at any time. Um, and so then we um, when we cast, we share what that you know what the final cost uh, or final investment will be on a per finished hour basis. Um, so you can see, okay, uh, Scott is at. $500 per finished hour. Josh is at $150 per finished hour. And you can listen to the samples, request an audition, um, and sort of evaluate um, the recommendations, you know, that way, both on, you know, voice style, voice, uh, or voice style, and then it's also on uh, uh, per finished hour rate. And so when you talk about the, the list price, and so when an author gets his product, and I say I pay Scott $1,200 for his narration of my book, and then I get that uh, 
you send it out to your distribution and the sales start coming in. Um, they roll in. They come rolling that's in. That's right. <laughs> one million sales. In yep, one we, million. We, we, yeah, bulldozers full of cash just right it's up this, to your doorstep. <laughs> drop it off, Wichita, Kansas. Make sure you've got the right route, the right street. Exactly. Right, there's two streets. Um, so um, they, they start coming in. And how do, can you, A, as an author, I mean, it looks like you could set your own price for your book. Um, but what are the rates so like for instance uh percentage of royalty. percentage of royalty so like if you publish a 2.99 book ebook on amazon you get 70 percent is there what are the publishing uh percentage rates and do they vary yep absolutely so you know we we publish into retail library k-12 through and uh we also publish into a multitude of business models so r straight retail a la carte um on limited subscription, credit subscription, et cetera. So the royalty rates from our partners vary based on channel and model. Um, generally speaking for retail, um, they range from 40% uh, to, or uh, for pure retail between 40% and 50% of the list price that the author sets. Um, for our subscription partners, it is uh, between 32% and 40%. Uh, again, of the list price. Um, and then uh, with Audible, um, it's the uh, non-exclusive rate, which is the 25%. Um, and Audible is the only partner where they still dictate, um, you know, what that, what the sale price is. So they pay off the, yeah, they pay off the net sales price. I want to get another one of Chuck's questions, but uh, so subscription partners, so you're talking about like ACX or, or I'm sorry, Audible or something like that, or what's the subscription part? Yeah, so it's, so, so uh, on our platform, a few different a, a few different ways. So subscription partner might be audiobooks.com, who has mm -hmm. a credit based network, um, and it could also be uh, TuneIn, who is uh, who has an unlimited subscription platform where uh, their listeners are paying I think eight ninety nine a month for unlimited access to audiobooks. So it covers mm -hmm. both credit subs credit subscription as well as unlimited subscription too. I've had, a, I, I love my subscription. I, I look forward to, it's one of my favorite times of the, of the month is like, oh boy, I'm getting some more book credits. I don't need any books because I'm five behind, but I'm going to get right. some new ones. It's like Christmas. Just, they, build, they can build up too, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, Stephen Manley asked, um, how, um, how many hours does it take to read a 90K, 90,000 word manuscript? Now, I think is this, if this is standard, I can probably answer that. I think that's probably between nine and 11 hours. Exactly. Uh, depending on your reader. Exactly. So the rule of thumb is 9,000 words. Uh, for every 9,000 words of text, one finished hour of audio. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, depending on the speed of narration, you'd be somewhere between, you know, somewhere around 10 hours probably. And then let's say, um, I think I can't remember where I heard people discussing this is that is there a certain length that your book should be? I know for fiction, it's a little bit longer than for nonfiction or, or so I've been told. As far as what yeah. people buy, you know, I, you know, we in in our experience, we haven't necessarily seen that. You know, I've seen, we've seen great books uh, um, at uh, you know shorter durations sell very well, mm -hmm. and then you have you know the Thrones and Lord of the Rings and books that are you know just an insane number of hours that also sell incredibly well. Um, and so I think that you know there may be still some residual data that may point to that. Um, and some of that is due to a longer audiobook having a higher price. And so consumers on Audible will use their credit on that higher priced audiobook, uh, are more likely to use a credit on a higher priced audiobook than paying retail for it when, you know, if a book is below that $14.95 price, they may just buy it a la carte. Um, but the fact of the matter is the explosion in audio and the way consumers are, you know, listening and, and you know, just attacking the format, whether it's audiobooks or podcasts or other, you know, sort of audio storytelling forms. Um, I think the line is sort of blurring between, you know, you have to be at a certain length. And if you're shorter than that or less than that, um, you won't attract attention because consumers are used to just more accustomed to listening to more audio. And so now it's just about finding a high quality work. And if the writing is great and the story is great and the narrator is fantastic and the audio storytelling is good you'll you'll find listeners because people that's what people want ultimately um 
I'm curious. I'm curious about the. You say the forty percent of the cost or the the price is what the author is going to get. Um, and so my my question is a on subscription services and b if they get it for a credit on Audible, do you know what the average payout is for? So like audiobooks.com, you pay fourteen ninety nine or whatever uh, a month. Uh, and you like, uh, and uh, so for if you sell a book on audiobook, are you getting the forty percent of the fifteen dollar credit amount, or are you getting uh, the price that you listed at? Yep. So with with audiobooks.com, it's based on the price that you list at. Okay. Uh, so ultimately, that credit subscription price, whatever they charge, um, isn't as relevant as the price that you set for your book, and that uh, forms the basis. Of of, of the royalty payout. So I could set my book for $30 on audiobook.com and I'm going to get 40% of $30, not 40% of $15. Is that right? Uh, correct. Yes. Okay. And again, I, I, I'd have to go back and look. I, I won't speak with certainty that uh, uh, that rate is 40%. I'd actually have to check my table, but um, sure, sure, sure. Technically speaking, yes, that's the case. This is kind of like a. Mm -hmm. This is like a. This is we won't burn you at the stake if you're wrong. Ex exactly. The one hundred and one course for us is very yeah. introductory. And, so and I, and, and I, you know, I have to. I, sh I sh should mention or have to mention, you know, with uh, with voices, um, authors keep eighty percent of all royalties earned, and then Find Away Voices uh, shares that other twenty percent for our work. Um, aggregating retailers and, and, and library sellers, et cetera, and LTs and doing, you know, all the behind the scenes work that goes into that. So I want to make sure that uh, I don't mislead anyone and I have that all out there too. There's okay. way more math in this episode than I'm comfortable with, but <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> um, so let's see, there's a couple of questions. And I know one of these has got to ask a second time. Um, What's the average price, or do we just cover the average price for an average length audio? But then the other one, the other question, Jared Hanley asks, how many books should an author have out before they consider doing audio? And this may be kind of a group, group just question. So I guess first question is, average price for average length audio novel, say 10 hours. Yeah, 10, ten hour book, um, you know, depending on what genre it is, um, likely somewhere between 18 and $24. Um, would be average and of course, you know, you can play with that by pricing it a little bit lower depending on the platform um, If you think that will bring you know more consumer interest um, But somewhere in that range would be a fair fair ballpark probably a little bit lower 18 to 22 You can plug that into your sweet spot calculator there and figure out how long it would take to um, exactly, uh, exactly, exactly. Ask exactly. Josh because he's yeah. an expert now do You have a uh, do you have um, recommendations for like if a brand new author comes in, they're not sure, and and so they say they came with a sixty-five thousand word novel. Would you uh, recommend them not to price it the same way as say someone that has a hundred and twenty thousand word novel, or do you do you come with that kind of information to the author, or you just let the author go buck wild and let them do whatever they want? <laughs> uh, you know what we do. We we have uh, the best of both worlds. So if you want to, uh, the point being, you have that control as the author to set that price. So. If you want to sort of, you know, go wild and set it yourself, you can. If you have any questions or want any information, you let us know and we'll help advise you and we'll take into account exactly what you were talking about. So how long is the book? What is the, what is the genre? What is it about? Does the author have a history of, you know, out there or, you know, what is um, their story? Um, and we can help recommend pricing and provide guidance that way. Um, if that will be beneficial to you. And we have that information too, um, you know, at a high level on our site that, you know, helps generalize uh, what potential costs are, but we're also um, always available to do exactly what you said. We do it all the time. So. Very cool. Uh, well, I want to mention real quick the show sponsor uh, this week, which is, uh, of course, BZ Hercules uh, and BZ Hercules Editing Services. Um, you can go to our website, keystrokemedium.com slash BZ Hercules, which will redirect you to her fantastic site where she gives our viewers, listeners, and audience a 15% discount on all editing, proofing, and triangulation services that she provides. You don't have to do all of them, but you can do uh, one or two or all or pick and choose at your heart's desire. 
um, go check her out. She does great work. She's done work for Scott. She's done work for Richard Fox. Uh, she will be doing work for me here shortly. Um, and she generally has a quick turnaround rate, rate, uh, quick turnaround, uh, and extremely good rates. And thank you, Chuck, the man, Chuck Manley for reminding me about tonight's good sponsorship. Job, Chuck. <laughs> and, uh, so <laughs> it's just not every day you can say man Chuck in yeah. public and, and and every time really I'm it, I'm disappointed really because I didn't have an overlay for that. But if I have an overlay for something, I want to call it the manly overlay <laughs> because you just can't say I'm gonna put up the manly overlay now for anything. You just can't do it for anything. You have to have really good parameters for it and gotta, when, it's gotta be in context. That's right. you, guys, <laughs> you guys need like a Gong or something you can bang every time you get to say Manchuk or something yeah, like there, that. There we go. Oh, we need a so, gong. You know, yeah, or just a gong in general or a horn or, you know, oh, something. We definitely, just to, we could do you know. something. Oh, my family would love that because they're all trying to be like blowing air horns down here. <laughs> we need bells, light candles. Just, we get a trumpet just, and just JR's in the back blowing his trombone. A, bra a brass band. You know, by next week there's a brass band back there, and yeah. it's just a whole different it's show. Like, uh, what's that movie? Every every hero needs a theme music, and there's the theme <laughs> air horn. Yes, we need an air horn, definitely. For the Imperial March. <laughs> there will be a lot of Darth Vader music going on in this episode. Stuff. So, do we want to talk about? Uh, um, it may be. I'm not sure if it's in the parameters of our show here, but what? Do you have any thoughts on how many books did you have before you start going into the audiobook um, realm? Yeah, you know, I think it I think it varies uh, depending on, on on the author, right, and depending on your platform and what you are looking to achieve, right? Because I think the investment um, in the audiobook, um, if in audiobooks, if you've never done it before, you know, can be can, you know can be considerably beneficial in growing your reach, growing your audience, tapping into what is really, you know, the fastest growing format in publishing. So, you know, I think it, you know, <laughs> you know, probably biased here, but I think it makes sense at every step of the way. Um, because if you think about, you know, audiobooks, digital audio is growing, you know, 40 plus percent year over year. Um, the format, it's, you know, in our opinion, it's the best way to reach a new audience. And so you have new listeners coming in every single day. You have new, you know, sellers coming into the market. Um, and so, you know, in our opinion, whether you have one book, whether you have 10 books, um, it always makes sense to produce an audio um, because of that additional reach, because of that, you know, additional exposure you can get now and then especially as we look out over the next 12, 24, 36 months, because, um, you know, with, you know, the mobile devices we're all carrying, there's nothing that's going to stop the explosion in audio because it just truly is the easiest way to consume content. So um, I guess that's the long way of saying, you know, no matter whether you have one book or you have many books, uh, you know, I think, I think it always makes sense um, or it can probably, make sense for you. Probably as soon as you can afford it um, and have, a, I mean, because obviously you got to be with, uh, having a budget's important for in, indies, I'm sure. Exactly. Um, so I'll make two comments and we'll get Kayleen's question. Um, so as far as whether it's a good idea, I think that audiobooks, I mean, think back to how many people are going, man, I wish I'd started publishing my e-books e in 2011. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. well, I think audiobooks is still new enough to get in on the front edge beyond that leading tidal wave that's going through. And I just, I think it's a huge, a huge growth industry um, cause, because of that. And the other reason, um, I think it might have been the 2016 Smarter Artists, they were, uh, Joanna Penn was talking about there's a world, there's some sort of program where they're going to have like $5 smartphones in India. And in lots of third world countries. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and, and they're going to be essentially um, their banks because you can't really get a loan or a bank or a credit card in certain parts of the world, but you can get phone yep. service, and then you can basically charge all your stuff through that. So you, everybody's going to have a device to listen to audiobooks. Is what I'm saying. So ex ex exactly, we actually joke, uh, and it's probably one of the cornier jokes that circulates in our office. Uh, but we always joke that, you know, it's not a cell phone, it's actually an audiobook player. And, uh, you know, so sometimes we refer to them as bad as that is, but you know, it speaks to your point, you know, the, uh, I tell all the time, Hey, call me on my audiobook player. That's what we do. Yeah, exactly. We don't even, we don't even reference phones. We just say, you know what, text me on my audiobook player and we're all good. I'll, I'll come meet you. 
Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> um, but it is, and and you know the the you know access to devices and access to content um, is only going to increase. And audio is you know a truly you know it is a non discriminatory way to consume content. You can be doing multiple things. You can be on the go, um, and audio lets you keep listening and consuming and um, you know the the dynamics for that continued growth are just you know in such a good place I've got I'd a like, question go ahead Scott I'd like to clarify I'm sorry I interrupted but I'd like to clarify what I said because I said I think you should probably do audiobooks as soon as you can but you should be real careful that you understand that the definition of as soon as you can because there's there's some moving parts to it and it's it's kind of a big investment you want to do it right and things like that um, but I think when you can, you probably should, I wouldn't wait personally. Although having said that, no, I don't know. I, 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 I my budget is also exhausted for audiobooks for the rest of the year. You guys can't see, you might just see the bare walls around me. Uh, uh I've been in a, uh, home renovation project for about 15 months. So I'm just tapped to be in with so I have no budget for anything at the moment it's yeah. all sunk into a uh, a money pit so to speak I'm living it yeah yeah uh that kind of goes back to what Kayleen asked uh that we were going to touch on a little bit ago and and that was uh, she was wondering if you do payment plans at all and then uh Chuck Manley asks uh would you produce a whole series or a trilogy before you release the book um and I think maybe what he means by that is if 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 two books are done would you would you be willing to record those two books and then hold them uh to do the the third one and could you do that all on one contract yep so um a couple i'll hit, hit both um at this time we don't have payment plans but that does not mean um we aren't considering it and evaluating it um it's some it's it's part of the feedback that we've gotten over even in the last week or so. So we're always evaluating and it's certainly something we're considering. So, um, yeah. you know, stay tuned always. Um, and then as it relates to the series, um, a couple of things. One, if you have two audiobooks done and you want to hold tight and get the third, you know, that third book in the trilogy done and wait and release them together, absolutely. We can hold off. We can, you know, uh, keep from publishing to make that happen. We have a couple of books now on the platform um, where the author is staggering the audiobooks, the release dates of his audiobooks, such that he can keep kind of a steady stream of momentum. So we have that, you know, right. ongoing. Um, and then, you know, the other thing to consider too is, you know, some, you know, we've we've seen it where, you know, you, you know, do you even package that uh, trilogy up as one, you know, even one large audiobook, even which is sort of unique. Um, but the point being, if you want. As the if you as the author want to publish and ho or hold off on publishing for an extra month or wait till we have that next book ready, we're good. We can do so, um, and there's no you know no challenge to us in accommodating that. So that's interesting. So if I had a trilogy and I wanted to do it as one project, I could come to you and say I want to do this as one audio book, but it's a trilogy, and that would be okay with you guys, or? Yeah, we can we can certainly facilitate it. So you know we can do it as you could come in and it is three different books that we do one at a time, and you just alert us along the way that you know what, hey, I'm gonna you know wait till we get all three books done and package them up together and publish, or you know you could come in and you know tell us about your book and say, hey, it's it's actually a trilogy, but I want to you know get everything you know the the ebook or the print book is already done. So you know I just want to give you the whole thing and get started on it. And let's get it all narrated and then I'll decide how I want to break it up. So, you know, we can, you know, uh, you know, you have, you have the control in that and, and how you want to do it. Great control. I know that uh, um, Richard Fox with his Ember War books, the first, they had the first two books in a publisher's pack. And I know that sells really well. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a, kind of a super, super lead magnet for series. Yeah. No, that's very cool. I like that a lot. I like, I like the, uh, as you say, the amount of control that you get with your your project so it's just not kind of crossing your fingers and hoping that audible will do for you exactly and that's you know we you know we took careful consideration before we launched voices to evaluate you know what options are available what makes sense what is the audiobook industry what does the audiobook market need and it kept coming back to 
author control, you know, author freedom, author flexibility. And we knew that had been so successful in driving the explosion in ebook success. And so we said, okay, how do we replicate that by creating additional choices and additional avenues to create, you know, audio books? Um, and again, like I said earlier, we are, I mean, we are just scratching the surface of what we have planned and what I think the industry, what we'll see from the audiobook industry over the next, you know, year or so. Um, it's going to be really exciting things. And, uh, you know, it all starts from giving, giving authors that control they need. That is very, very cool. Well, get them in there to innovate and use their imagination, creativity to help boost the, the stuff. Exactly. We are coming to the end of the hour, and uh, I think this has been one of the most uh, enlightening shows we've had, uh, uh, especially because of the, of the amount of our, our listeners and then the, the huge fans that Scott and I are of uh, audiobooks. I'm, I'm really intrigued by this new uh, service. And uh, hopefully here in the near future, I'll be able to, to check it out and try it. I don't have any audiobooks published of my own, but uh, eventually here in the next year or so, I'll have something that I probably will want to get put into an audiobook. And, and now you, that you have something published in, in the form of wormholes. That, yeah. Yes. So you got some uh, audio content out there. I do, I do have, I do, I do, I am featured in an audiobook, but none of my own. So, uh, <laughs> But uh, Kelly, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. Uh, especially this uh, uh, late notice and and hanging out with us. It was a great time. Thank yeah, you. no, man, no, no problem at all. And, and you know, anytime you guys are fantastic. So um, anytime we can spread the gospel of audiobooks, we're open to doing so. So well, amen, you know, amen. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for giving me the chance. We'll we'll wave the banner. We'll wave it as high as high as we can reach it, up there. Ex exactly. That's exactly. right. In our our um, our listeners today our live listeners and stuff thanks for all your awesome questions i think this has probably been one of our most questionful 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 questions. i like it what are, our, it what are our most questions it's late <laughs> we're gonna write see that and i have this sheet now and i think what i'm gonna do well not with this sheet specifically because i think my wife would kill me if i did it with this sheet but every time scott comes up with a cool word like that i'm gonna write it in <laughs> sharpie on this sheet we get and then by the end of season two we'll yeah. have like a whole thing of scott isms yeah and that all be out of the dictionary in about 100 years i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> oh man well thanks everybody that hang out with us live we really appreciate awesome. your support and and uh, joining us to talk to kelly tonight on uh monday we have jasper t scott uh coming to talk about his books uh, and then in a couple of weeks, we have Monica Leonel and a couple other. Uh, oh, Barry Hutchinson's coming next month, uh, July 10th. Uh, his book, Space Team, is a co comedic uh, space opera novels. And those uh, those are really funny. So he'll be on the show in a couple of weeks. So. That'll be a good time. Uh, Kelly, thanks again, man. It was great hanging out with you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like our show. Uh, everybody that's listening, check us out on iTunes. Check us out on Stitcher or come here and watch us on YouTube. For Scott Moon, I am Josh Hayes. We have been live with Kelly Lytle on Thursday night. Make sure you come back and hang out with us. We're going to talk about some reading. We're going to talk about some writing. And, of course, everything in between right here on Keystroke Medium. You guys have a good night.